Hello and welcome to another Age of Empires 2 um, scenario editor tutorial. Today I'm gonna talk about risk scenarios and yeah well first of all I should start with um yeah, well what are risk scenarios? Well um yeah there are two kinds of scenarios that are called risk scenarios in Age of Empires 2. Uh, the you got uh, one kind that's uh, specially fitted for multiplayer, usually played on a world map, and it utilizes the monuments. So whoever you uh, controls a monument gets permanent uh, stream of units, and um, yeah, if another player's unit uh, moves near the uh, wonder near the uh, monument, he gets control over that monument, and then he starts getting. Uh, reinforcements there, um, and the other very <coughs> version of it is um, the single player version, and it uses um, the select object trigger and uh, so a condition and um, gold income. So um, it's more about controlling territory. So players get gold for controlling villages or towns or castles. And and the more castles as they control, of course, the more gold they get. And this gold can be used um, to train soldiers. Um, yeah, this is also the um, kind of map I will show you shortly. Um, there it is. So just uh, as an example, so you can um, imagine how this is um, played. So uh, here was my main castle. I can train some uh, long swordsmen here. Uh, sorry, 200 swordsmen. So if I, s as long as as I've selected the barracks, um, yeah, 200 swordsmen are spawning for me, and I get this periodic income for controlling many many castles. Like this one, and every um, castle has some like other kinds of units I can train here. So you can, I can use uh, long swordsmen or scorpions. Over here, I can get uh, archers. Well, not yet, as um, I first have to destroy this tower. So as soon as this tower gets gets destroyed, or in other case, uh, as soon as I destroy this castle here, of course, um, the Castle have got, of course, uh, disappear, and then a new red one will spawn here. So, um, it's a new castle under my control will appear here, and then I will be able to use all those buildings here. All right, I think you now got an idea what this looks like in practice. So let's take a look at the triggers. Um, I might have a very simple example for that. Um, if I can find it. So it's pretty risk testing map. Okay, yeah, uh, here's. Um, first of all, I'm going to show you how to yeah, do this select object and then. Uh, spawn some units. So um, let me quickly demonstrate it here. I got 100 starting gold and I get a periodic income of 50 for owning one castle. And uh, if I select this stable, yeah, camels will spawn. Each camel um, uses 20 gold to be trained. So as soon as, as as I run out of gold, no more camels get spawned, even if I select this. Yeah. So far, so good. Um, so let's see now how the triggers are working here. So this is um, 
first of all you have to create objects so where is it the camel yeah um, this is a trigger that is looped and um, always on and has no condition so it just it happens over and over again so um, a unit spawns here and if there's no uh, th if the unit here is no longer there a new unit will spawn um, those to make sure that uh, the units don't move away uh, it's important to use a let's play a three a, a mobile units AI um, yeah so those neutral units spawn next to the um, military buildings And this is um, the trigger. Yeah, if if I own one castle, every 15 seconds, I will get 50 gold. And I also used silent tribute here to make this less annoying. And um, yeah, well, here's extra 50 gold. It should be. So if I own two castles, I'll get additionally 50 gold. So all in all, 100 gold every 15 seconds. And this is the unit spawn trigger itself. So if um, player one has a unit here that is a castle, so as long as I control this castle here, um, and I have, wait, it's strange. I have 20 gold. And this um, stable is selected, and the timer is on two seconds here. Can delete that one. Um, and the effects for this are uh, that the ownership of the camel that stands before the in front of the stable. Um, gets converted to player one. The camel starts moving, so a new unit can spawn there, and player one pays 20 gold tribute to player three. So, um, well, that's basically how you do the unit spawning triggers. Um, so, how to do the triggers for. Um, Changing ownership of ownerships of castles. That is, yeah, very easy ownership of castles and towers. So um, let me just quickly do it here. Um, the condition is uh, objects in area. So if player one has objects he in this area. Um, then a tower will spawn of player one. Wait, it's a building, so let's select buildings. Um, watchtower will spawn here. Oh, and that of course didn't work because um, we need to select a uh, unoccupied tile if we want to set a location for unit spawns so we'll use a little trick here let's move the tower a little bit sideways then let's say the tower should spawn there and let's move the tower back again so the effect is already there. So as long as this tower is standing, of course, no tower of player one can spawn. But as soon as the tower gets destroyed and the units of player one are uh, standing around it, a new tower controlled by player one will spawn here. And um, yeah, well, the periodic income of um, towers, so of villages, is of course the same trigger as a uh, tribute P1 castles one. Um, just instead of castles, you got towers here, and maybe a slightly different income value. Like one tower gives you twenty-five gold. Um, 
And now it should work. Yeah. So, right now it... Um, I got this tower here, and if an enemy comes and destroys it... And I start move there again. It gets rebuilt. Um, now it's also important to do the opposite trigger, so if player 2 moves into this area and there's no tower, he gets uh, to spawn uh, his one. So um, for, for each player you have to make the, the trigger that um, he can control towers. Um, so like in this scenario we got um, two players, so two active players, so here player 1 and player 2. And uh, this is also a castle of player two, so um, we would need to make two triggers that um, handle the ownership of this tower, as well as uh, two triggers for the unit spawnings of each castle, because um, if I uh, capture his castle, so if I destroy his castle and it, uh, my castle rises here, um, so that I'm also able to um, able to train units from this stable, in this case it were knights. And um, yeah, in terms of how to control an AI in such a risk map, I will do a second video about that, because that's a little bit more complicated. Um, but after all, it's easier than you might think it is, because you're not really doing too much with the AI, you're doing a little more with uh, um, setting an, a mobile AI and using triggers to trigger the attacks, at least that's uh, the way I do it. So, um, yeah, well, thanks for watching and listening, and um, see you in part two.